Okay guys, so today I want to show you how to implement Conway Scheme of Life. But before I do that, I want to show you this uh, diagram because I feel like this is actually pretty useful to understanding how the algorithm works if you don't really understand it whatsoever. So basically what we're going to have is we are going to have one array or buffer. It really depends on how you want to call it. So we're going to have an array or buffer here. And what we're going to do is we are going to go through uh, this two-dimensional array and we are going to calculate whether or not every single point is alive. So we're going to pass every single point from this array to this is alive function. So pretend this is a function. And then what we're going to do is we are going to save the result to another buffer. So the reason for that is because we, if we try to save uh, the result back to the original array, it would essentially destroy the rules of the game. The, the game would not work anymore. So that's why we need to have two arrays. We need to have array one, and then we have array two or buffer one, and buffer two. Imagine that this is going to go through. It's going to, I didn't animate this, but basically it's going to go through. It's going to uh, like, you know, test every single one. So let's say it goes here, then it tests and then it assigns, and then it goes here, it tests, then it assigns goes here, tests, and then assigns. So essentially imagine you do this for every single point. Then finally, when all of the points were assigned, when all of the values are calculated, whether or not they're true or false, whether or not they're alive or dead, what we're going to do is we are actually going to swap these two buffers. And the reason we swap these two buffers is because this buffer here is going to have the latest game state. This buffer here is going to be the most up-to-date game state, while this one is going to be the old game state. So what we're going to do is we are essentially just going to move this uh, in memory. We're just going to move this like this and say, okay. So, so what we're going to do is we are going to now calculate all of these points using these points. So we're going to say, okay, go here test this and then assign, go here, test this and then assign. And then once we do that again, we are again going to swap them. So we're going to say, okay, let's swap these two buffers like so. Okay, and then you're going to do the same thing over and over again. So basically this is the whole algorithm. You're just going to test, um, Select the, select the point, test that point, and then assign to the new buffer. And then you're just going to keep doing that over and over again. I think the hardest part of Conway Scheme of Life is this is a live function because there are a lot of tests that you can actually do wrong. Uh, but I'm going to try to walk you through them to actually show you how to do them correctly. Anyways, let's get started and uh, I'll see you there. This game is going to be 640 by 480. Now that we have that, the next step is we have to actually create the two buffers. The two buffers that in the previous example I showed you are going to hold the state of the game. So every single iteration of the game, these two buffers are going to update to reflect the latest um, the latest uh, state of the game. And the, the way I'm going to implement these two buffers is I'm going to use uh, two two-dimensional arrays. So I'm going to have this std array. Okay, great. So next up is we are going to have to actually generate a bunch of random points. So this is going to be a starting point. We are going to have a bunch of random points uh, in this array. And the reason for that is because when we start our game, we want uh, some initial state, right? We want some initial state. And if everything is zero in this array, we're, gonna, we're not going to have anything alive. So we need to initialize it with something random. So therefore, we're going to choose to a range based for loop. Or actually, I'm going to just explain what this is. Create random points. So we're going to create a whole bunch of random points. We say for auto. And what we're going to do here is we are going to run the generate function. And here we're going to pass in a lambda expression. So what we're going to do here is we're going to return either a 1 or a 0 based on some random condition. Now that that's finished, we can actually begin our main loop. So we've finished writing the setup. So this was all set up and now finally we can actually begin with a main loop. So we're going to define a main loop like this. We say, while true, this is never going to finish. Uh, what we want to do is we want to actually uh, test, actually, 
Mm, I think the first thing we have to do is we have to define our is alive function. So we're going to define a new function called is alive. And this function is going to take an array. And I'm going to pass this array by reference just to save some time. Okay, so why do we need this? Why do we need this is alive function? If we go to Wikipedia, we can actually read the rules of Game of Life. So as you can see here, uh, these are the rules for Game of Life. Uh, any life cell with fewer than two live neighbors dies. Any life cell with two or three live neighbors lives on the next generation. Any life cell with more than three life neighbors dies. Uh, any dead cell with exactly three life neighbors becomes alive. So to explain that, I, I guess um, I, we can go back to the diagram I showed you. Okay, so taking a look at this diagram, uh, when they say any live, so if they say any live cell, so for example, let's say we are looking at the cell. We're looking at the cell and this cell has neighbors. Its neighbors are like this. They're, its neighbors are this, this, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Actually, let me just color this a different color to make it easier to understand. So let's say we're taking a look at the cell. Uh, what we have to do is we have to look at the neighbors around it, right? So uh, one of the rules states that if any uh, cell has more than, let's say, three live neighbors, it dies. So if we assume that this is alive, um, this is alive, and this is alive, then on the next iteration, uh, this cell will become dead. So I guess uh, dead color could be white. So it's dead. Next iteration of this loop is dead. These are the kind of rules that you have to implement in Game of Life. So what I'm doing here is I'm passing in X and Y, and this is the position in this array that we're going to check. So we're going to check relative to this position if its neighbors are alive or dead. So uh, basically the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a new integer, and I'm going to call this alive. And we're going to set it to zero. We're going to assume that uh, there is no neighbor which is alive in this array. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to test whether or not the neighbors of the position we passed in are alive or not. And we can do them like this. We can say if x is greater than zero. So the reason we're testing if x is greater than zero is because if we go back to my other example here, if, uh, let's say, we're testing this cell here, and we want to test this neighbor, well, this neighbor is out of bounds, so we want to say, okay, if we are at least here, if we are at least um, uh, at index 1, then this neighbor is valid. Otherwise, there's nothing here, so there's no point in testing anything here. So we're just going to say if x is greater than 0, so if it's not uh, the first, if it's not the first um, index, then what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, so is this alive? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to test if the left neighbor is alive. So the neighbor, which is re relatively to the left of the point we're testing, and we're going to test if it's alive. So we're going to say if x is greater than zero, so we don't want to go out of bounds. So if we're testing the left neighbor, we want to make sure that we are not indexing negative one, right? We, we don't want to index the negative one position in this array. So therefore, we're going to say and game x minus one y is equal to one. So we're, we're testing if relative to the position of x minus one, is this alive? Is this neighbor alive? And if it is, we're going to increment alive by one. And just to make sure you understand what I'm doing here is I'm testing the left. So the left of this position. So let's say we're testing this position here. Uh, we are we want to make sure that we're not testing this. So uh, if we are at this position and we test this uh, that's not good you don't want to index something that's that's outside the bounds of your array so we only want to test the left position if we are let's say at index one or at index two or three or four right uh, and in the same manner you also don't want to test the right side so if you are at this position if you're at the end of your array and you're trying to 
index something beyond the end of your array. That's not good either. So you don't want that. Uh, same with if you're if you're here, you don't want to index the top like this, or if you're at the bottom, you don't want to index below that. So basically, what we have to do is we have to just do a bunch of uh, tests to make sure that we're not indexing out of the bounds of our array. Okay, so getting back on point, I'm just going to write out the other rules. Okay, so we did our test on the left, right, top, and the bottoms. Now what we have to do is we have to do the te the same tests, but we have to do them on uh, the top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right. Uh, relative to... So, for example, we, we basically tested, let's say, this. We tested this. This. And this. And finally, what we have to do is we have to test um, the other cases. So we also have to test something like this. So we have to test this, this one, this one, and this one. So we are testing um, all of the all of the elements, or we're testing all of the points uh, around this point. So if we are testing this point, we have to test everything around it as well. I'm just gonna make this blue, I guess. So if we're testing this, we have to test this, 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 this. So basically we have to do how many? We have to do eight, uh, we have to do eight tests about which points are alive. Okay, let's uh, finish it up. So now that we did that, we can actually implement the rules of the game. And the rules of the game are like this. Uh, so the first rule is anything that is alive. So we say alive and fewer than two. Uh, so anything that has fewer than two points alive next to it, anything that has fewer than two neighbors is going to die. So the way we test that is we're going to say if game x y is it two one and alive is uh less than two we're gonna return false so the next rule states that if we are alive and we have two or three neighbors uh we live so if alive and two or three then live The third rule is if uh, we have more than three neighbors which are alive, we die. Actually, I, th I think I could just return. Yeah, I think that's fine. And the third rule is if we have exactly three neighbors which are alive and the point we're on is dead, that point comes back to life. Actually, I think otherwise we can just uh, return false if we miss something. Okay. Okay, so getting back to this while loop, what we're going to do here is we are going to check every single point in display since we generate a whole bunch of points in this uh, generate function for display, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate whether or not this point is going to be alive uh, in the next version or the next increment of this game. And we're going to store the result in the swap array like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a for loop. And what we're going to do is we're going to assign it to this swap array the result of the is alive function. Okay. So basically what we're doing here is we are assigning to this um, this index one 
if we are alive and zero if we're not. So if we're not, if this is if this um, so if this position ik is not alive, we are going to assign zero. Otherwise, we're going to assign one. Uh, then what we're going to do is we are going to actually use. Um, I forgot to do this, but I need to instantiate a new object, and this is going to be called uh, screen. So what I'm doing here is I'm using uh, this um, screen object that, or I'm using this uh, screen class that I define up here in screen.h. If you need this, I will provide this as a GitHub link. Uh, but if you want, you can very easily just uh, create your own draw method. It's not that hard. Okay, anyways. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to draw uh, all of these points to that screen object that I just created. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to check if this point is live. What we're going to do is going to say screen dot draw pixel. And finally, what we're going to do is we are going to copy everything from swap to display. And finally, what we're going to do is we are actually going to display to the screen. Now, keep in mind, this is very specific to the type of drawing API I'm using. So if you decide not to use this drawing API, you may have to do it a different way. Okay, let's actually compile this and see how that turned out. Okay, so there you go. That's uh, Conway's Game of Life. I feel like this is a fairly simple program. And uh, if you enjoy this video, thank you. And I'll see you later. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe.